Today, another dollar, another episode of the Easy Corner. My guest, some people will call him the best big man in the city of Houston in the class of 2021. Legacy school in sports science own. Also, Houston Hoops EYBL circuit, 17 U's own. Mr. Ashton Smith, man, how you doing today, man? Good, good. Man, man, first of all, let's just start off, obviously, the pandemic called COVID-19. Obviously, this year, I know in your heart, you were trying to prove a point on the EYBL circuit, knowing <laughs> that this is your last year of AAU yes. ball and mm -hmm. you have that opportunity to play on the prestigious EYBL circuit, what goes through your mind? Um, I feel bad, like, that we can't get on the EYBL this year because I was really, like, trying to boost my recruitment to the highest level and play at the highest level with the highest people. And what, just, just knowing that you've been just working on your game, like literally you're, you're a guy that's constantly on the stock rise. What, mm -hmm. could, what do you believe that the EYBL could have done for you? I feel like it would have put me in a position where I can get college coaches to look at me more than just in school ball. Mm -hmm. Like that stage is the biggest stage in the circuit. So having seen those college coaches lined around the wall, it's like, Wow, you really here. And when you when you make yeah. when you make a decision like that to join an EYBL team, obviously this was going to be your first year playing. What goes mm -hmm. into a decision like that? Because at the end of the day, like I felt like the past few years you've been undervalued on what team people have questioned you like, "Hey, can he play on that big time circuit?" And for you to make that jump, like your junior year, your last year of AAU, what went into that decision? It was, it was really a no-brainer because we knew what we had to do. Mm -hmm. We knew how hard it was going to take. We knew how hard we had to work to get to that level. And when we, when we made the decision, it was like, we're ready for it. It's not looking back now. I want you to give me kind of your advice on the younger, like on younger kids when they, when they're, if they're, able to reach that level and play because obviously to me you chose to play on the high circuits when you were ready how important is it that you just don't waste time playing on the circuits like 14 15 and 16 and barely getting playing time just knowing to play when you're ready how important is that that's really important because if you're not ready then you're not gonna they're gonna look at you as like you're not ready so Playing when you're ready is very uh, – it's like – it's really a big decision to play on that – um, on the circuit because if you're not really ready, then how are you going to get looked at? I get it. I get it. I, you went to the OTR camp um, last week. Was it la Last week was the OTR camp, right? Yeah. It was, it was, it was, it was it last week. Just talk mm -hmm. about that camp, playing with a few 2021s, guys like Javon Jackson, guys like Will Young, Wade Taylor, and a plethora of other guys just coming out and showing, the, and showing what the city is really about, even though Mr. Wade Taylor is from Dallas. But for him to come down to Houston and see what that competition is about, what did you get from that best of both, both worlds camps OTR, which was hosted by Marcus Sloan. What did you get out of that camp? Um, with the exception of the Dallas guys, I've been playing with the Houston guys for like since we were like third grade. So it's really like they've just gotten better. We've all gotten better. And the Dallas guys, they just added more talent to it. It was just really, it was a good experience Talking playing with all those guys. Quarantine. Quarantine. During this time, what have you been really just working on on your game, and what are you specifically trying to get better at? Because I see the athleticism, I see more of you having an, a, a a bigger motor. 
I, I see a bigger motor when, I, when I'm watching these highlights of you because I really haven't been to any AAU games, but I'll be back on the scene, but I haven't really been in, in these AAU games probably in a month or so. But watching your highlights, I see a guy that's getting, that's crashing the boards at will and a guy that's having a big motor. What, are, what have you been working on during this quarantine hours? I've been really working on being consistent and working on my shooting more because the college coaches love a versatile player and and they love a bigger motor. That's that's all I've been working on. But I've been working on my game altogether. Obviously, like I said, you really haven't – you didn't get a chance to play on the EYBL, but – what is the message that Coach Shu been delivering to you just when it comes to recruitment? Because this is a guy that's almost coached every top guy in the city, guys that's played at high division levels, guy that's, guys that are in the NBA, guys that made it to Final Four overseas. Just the organization of the Houston Hoops and how your recruiting is boosting up, what is the advice that Coach Shu gives to you? He gives he gives advice. The advice he gives me is just to play hard. Like, don't worry about what everybody says. Just play just play your game. And that's what he allows me to do. Talk about talk a little bit about your Nimitz years, man, because obviously you're not going there for your senior year, but Nimitz, that was a place that you know you made a household name. You know if you're going to to see Nimitz play, we know that well. Then the big the big guy Ashton Smith was down there. So just talk about your years and how you've developed just carrying a mantle for Nimitz. Well, from my freshman year to my junior year, it's been it's really been a long ride. Yeah. In those in the, the uh in that gym. So it's like really it's it's good to be it's good to be at another school, but like back then I was really like grinding and working hard. I'm still grinding and working hard, but that's when I really had to get into it and be the person that I am today. Shout out, shout out some of the guys that's been helping you, man, just throughout the years. Because at the end of the day, like I said, I feel like this year was supposed to be your come up. This summer is supposed to be your come up. But even though you're actually really still coming up with a lot of division one recruits, high majors, high majors like the Big 12, the ACC is calling your name and stuff like that. But just talk about how did you get here? Because a few years ago, you weren't really the talk of the town. But now these Division One coaches are coming to see you play. Who has been helping you get to that next level? Um, I really want to shout out Coach DJ Anderson no for helping me with my game. And also all my coaches at Nimitz, too. Yeah. I got you. I got you. Legacy School of Sports Science. Obviously, we know the lineage of Mr. P.J. Cousinard, the head coach over there. But when, we're, before we get to him, we're looking at the players on this team. The point guard, P.J. Neal. Brian Miles. Mason Howe. Jonathan Massey. And obviously... Your guy, Mr. Aaron Scott. When you yeah. look at this team on paper, this can be not just only one of the most dangerous teams in the city of Houston, but this can be one of the most dangerous teams in the state of Texas. But I know knowing you guys' competitive nature, you guys are trying to be the most dangerous team in the country. Talk about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I got there, it was like, it was like, if we're here now, it's like, that that our team is just so our team is competitive more than our talent, but our competitiveness is where how we're built is what is what builds us. Is it put up? And, oh no! Go ahead, 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 go ahead. It's it's how it built like that. Our competitiveness is it builds us to where like we don't even have to be talented. We can just be competitive and work hard, and we'll be good. We know what kind of program your head coach, P.J. Cousy, has put together in Cousy Lee. Even though we know that he's had talented players, we all hear about the legendary grind on what does it take. Like, those players from Cousy Lee, as t 
that Coos Elite 2020 team, as talented as they were, that's the definition of getting it out, getting it out the mud. Mm-hmm. What does what what does you, what does your coach just tell you? What like what what is he trying to deliver? What kind of message is he trying to deliver to you guys? Because at the end of the day, we know as Lenny is not just as a head coach, but it, as it's his playing days going back to Yates and his playing days going back to Wichita State. So he's a proven guy on this level. So what is he preaching when he's talking about hard work? He preaches he preaches every day about how our schedule is and how big of a schedule that we have. We're playing number one, number two schools in the country. So hard work is every single day, day in and day out, outside working, in the weight room working, um, in the gym working. He preaches that all the time because he doesn't want us to get up there and get embarrassed on national television. So that's why we work so hard. That's why we we play like we're the underdogs. That's how we that's how you gotta look at it. Your point guard PJ Neal, this is a guy that was there last year, one of the one of the top starting returners, a guy that is still hungry with a bad taste in his mouth about kind of losing in the state in the state championship. Knowing what he he went through a year ago, what does what is he specifically want from you, and what is he telling you to do? Because at the end of the day, that's the guy that's going to be calling the sets. That's going to be the guy that's making sure you guys are in position to beat those top teams in the country. But as a, at that point guard is back, what does he tell you? He tells me, he tells me all the time, just get ready to have get ready to have the ball in your hands, because I'm giving it up. So it's like, it's like you almost have to be ready. Like you have to be ready for it because he's going to pass it. Him and our other guards on the team. Talk about your friendship with Mr. Aaron Scott and just how much, because every time I look up, you guys are always working out together. You guys are doing damn near everything together. You guys are supposed to be on the EYBL circuit this year. What has he meant to Mm -hmm. you just moving forward, just – just basketball wise and just friendship wise, because I see like a close unit, like everywhere you're at, he's at, like you guys really genuinely got that love for each other and got that mutual respect. What has he meant to you knowing that you guys are going to go on this journey, your last high school journey together? Um, It's meant a lot because we've gotten each other better and we work, we work out, Every single day, even through quarantine, we worked out every day. Early, early mornings, late nights, we just work, 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 and that's that all. That's all it is to it. I mean, I've been playing with him since like at least third grade, and we really started playing in seventh grade. So it's like that long friendship you have, and then to have him as a teammate at my new school is is just. Real big for the uh, real big for the team because we have that we have that connection on the team. Can you give me something about Mr. Aaron Scott that people really don't know? Because what I see is another six six guard, but I still believe that he kind of is, is underappreciated in this city. You as one of his best friends, and you know his game probably better than anybody. What is something that you know about? Mr. Aaron Scott on that court that everybody just overlooks. He has a very deadly mid range. Like he does not miss. And that's that's the that's the element to his game. It's like and he also is like has kind of sneaky bounce, but <laughs> it's getting up there though. <laughs> What's that conversation like between you two? when you guys know that you guys are both going to legacy? Because at the end of the day, I know that you have aspirations and goals as individuals, but you guys also have aspiration and goals as a team. What is that conversation like? Because you guys are expected to be one of the best teams in Texas. You guys are expected to be one of the best teams in the country. So so as not, I'm not even having the conversation as friends. What, how is the conversation as competitors? 
of what you guys are trying to get accomplished. The conversation as competitors is we yeah, we're trying to be the be the best team in the country, but we're trying to also go to college too. And we have to make each other better so we can be better on that that next level. Speaking of college, um, is do you believe that it's tougher this year now? Because since that it wasn't really like the the the, the recruitment and stuff like that, and no really no circuit game. It, it, like does that put a chip on a lot of people's shoulders coming in because you guys are a senior-led group. So is that a chip coming in? Because at the end of the day, as much as you want to be the best team in the country, knowing that this AAU season was all, is just as much as a flop? Mm-hmm. It, it, like, 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 so what does that do for you guys, knowing that, that that extra incentive is we just trying to get to college too? It, it's a big chip because coming in as a senior, it's like most – it's like some seniors on our team don't even have offers, so mm-hmm. it's really hard for them to get noticed mm-hmm. like like we were as juniors. Okay. So 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 I guess my, my, my question is basically how focused can this team be? Because Ashton, in my eyes, is a little bit I, I've heard guys who commit early to get that out the way to focus on the school season, but obviously AU wasn't here this past for for the past like four months. So these are guys that's buying um, buying for a scholarship. So sometimes you might see guys do a little bit out of the ordinary because they know that coaches is watching, especially you guys schedule. And you know, so so how does the team focus? How does the team accomplish their goals knowing that you still have seniors who are fighting for scholarships? The team focus is real good. I mean. We we worry about getting to college, but at the same time, it's like you have you have to know your role and play okay. your game the way you were taught to play. Okay. I mean, you don't have to do anything out of the ordinary. I mean, if it's meant for somebody to see you, then it is. But is knowing the winner that coach coach PJ is, is he kind of preaching to you guys the guys that really don't have well the guys that want their recruitment to be better than. It already is. Is he preaching that winning can cure everything if we get it done? I mean, he does, but I think that if you're if you're not winning and if you're playing your game the way you're supposed to be playing, then somebody's gonna see you. I like that. I, 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 I listen. Like that was real. That was real. I I really haven't heard that. There's a, there's a lot of coaches that come out and preach. I understand, but like if we win. We go. Don't worry about it. It cures everything. So, but I like the how you put it though. Mm -hmm. Because winning is not winning is not really everything in high school basketball. I mean, it's good to win, but at the same time, you're trying to go to college. Okay. And that's that's what going back to my high school season at Nimitz. We didn't win every game. Okay. But so all I did was play my game and do my part, and that's that. Colleges, man. Just talk about the recruitment. I've seen that. Did you just pick up Nebraska? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so just talk about the college recruitment and who's just recruiting you for, for the people who really don't know. Um. Well, I do have 91 offers from Houston, McNeese State, North Texas, uh, Syracuse, Seton Hall, Oral Roberts, uh, University of Texas at Rio Grande Valley, and uh, Nebraska, and also um, Virginia Tech. You walk into high school as a 14-year-old. Now you're, walk- you're walking out an 18-year-old. At any point, did you believe that this could happen for you? I mean, I didn't expect it. Mm-hmm. I, I really didn't expect it. For me, I wanted to be this good, but I didn't really expect to be this good. Like, when do you believe that basketball turned to fl- like you turned to switch on? Like, okay, I can get a free education from this. When do you like? What was the moment in the point you were just like, oh, I'm about to, I, I'm I'm going to college for free. <laughs> um, towards like my sophomore year, s- summer going into my junior year, I knew that. I had to get on it. Had to had to work harder. Had to grind harder 
put more hours in the gym, more hours in the weight room. So it's like, it's really like a, I really was like, it was like, I had to do it. It was no choice. I'm going to be honest with you. I have been skeptical of this class of 2021 in the city because mm -hmm. I, 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 I need you to just ride for your dogs and who you guys have because at the end of the day, like, I respect the players, but, like, it, I don't see that off because I think that that for a long time that title kind of belonged to Jarrell Colbert, Keon Edwards. Everybody was like, oh, those are the guys that's going to take Houston to the next level. But obviously mm -hmm. they're not here no more. So now you guys got guys like you, guys like your boy, your boy Aaron Scott, R.J. King, Obviously, Big Deuce is going to go play football. Caleb Stewart, guys like that. Talk about this 2021 class because I, I, I was skeptical of it because you really don't see, you don't hear the, the star name. Oh, and I can't forget about Ramon Walker, Mr. Ramon Walker. Ramon mm -hmm. Walker. So, like, you don't hear that, you know, it, it, they're McDonald's All-American in the city. But just talk about your 21, 2021 class and how good this class is, really is. I feel like my class is competitive. Oh. That's the word, competitive, because at all these camps, at all these games, you get 100% compet like we compete. Mm -hmm. It's not it's not not everybody in the class is is um D1 or or going high major or whatever. Mm -hmm. They just compete and play their game. And I feel like people like Caleb and Aaron and RJ, they're like, I, I, they can I, I, I like Jay Francis and, um, and, and Javon Jackson. I can't forget yeah. about those two. Yeah. Yeah, Javon and Jay, they're like, they compete. Like, Jay gives me the best, and I give him the best of me. So it's really like we compete. And Sir Isaac, too. Sir Isaac, Sir Isaac. So when you guys, when, when I say that, how do you believe that you guys are carrying this mantle? Because at the end of the day, like I said, we've seen a lot of greats come through the years. Obviously, two great ones in Trey Marn Mark and LJ Cryer and Shahari Long. Those guys, Eddie Lapp gets led 2020. How do you guys feel like you compete as a, as a whole against any city in the state of Texas? Because at the end of the day, we know Dallas got some hitters with, led by um, Mr. Harrison Ingram, Wade Taylor, and Manny Obaseki, guys like that. So, like, when when I say guys like when when I mention those guys, how do you guys believe that you guys compete against Dallas guys? We match up good. At the end of the day, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say anybody's better, but I yeah. think I think Houston has more more like compete competitive kids. Okay. Like, okay, okay. Yeah. Now, that's what I just that's what I just I, I just want to hear because at the end of the day, like I said, I've interviewed you guys, like I've interviewed Wade Taylor, I've inter interviewed Manny Obaseki. One of the things that they say is and, and it comes to truth to me, is that he said, E, I can't sit here and lie about Dallas. I believe we're all friends. I feel like in Houston yeah. though. From the outside looking in, it looks like the media just pins kids against each other, and then they, and they start believing that. But they said in Dallas, yeah. it's just more like everybody's friendly. Like I play for Manny plays for Texas Hard Work. I play for Southern Assault, but we we all work it out in one gym together. So what what is your take on that? Like, do you feel like the media just hypes it up, kid versus kid, or is there some real real ongoing beef there between the kids? The media just hypes it up. I mean, uh -huh. I. I hang around all every 2021 person. Okay. Like you can think of like okay. Caleb, Aaron, Jay, everybody. So it's like it's not really a beef between okay. us or anybody. It's just the media. I mean, because because at the end of the day, mm -hmm. I don't. Oh, I don't really. Mm -hmm. I don't really listen to the media like that. Okay. I mean, I listen to it, but like, mm -hmm. I mean, it really doesn't affect my game. 
Okay. Okay. No, because because it, 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 to me, the thing that's more sad about it is sometimes it's not even all the media. It's the parents that's literally on Twitter, like, oh, this this kid not better than my kid. This kid is like yeah. this. This kid is like that. So that's why when you look up, like, what's going on in Houston, I really don't get that same feel off, off Dallas parents because some of these top players' parents I follow that from Dallas, they're not saying the stuff that Houston parents are saying. So, like, when you look at it, knowing that those are parents that are saying that, what is your take on that, too? Because, obviously, you say, like you say, you don't listen to it, but we all see it because we all have that social media. So, so what do you say to mm-hmm. that? I mean, the parents, I hear it in the gym all the time. I hear it on – I see it on social media. I just don't say anything. Yeah. But, I mean, it's not really a – it's not really a problem. Yeah. Because the parents are going to talk. It's just opinions. Okay. Just like everybody else. When it when it comes time to make your decision to go to college, what are you actually looking for? Because, like I said, you you're a guy that like I believe is a late boomer, but I see the work that you're putting in now, and you're getting your just due. So, like, you got almost schools from different from different conferences, from high major to mid major, that's coming after you. So, when it comes time to make a decision. What are you looking for? I think I'm looking for a good fit and good education. I mean, the basketball part is already there, but the good education, I I just, that's what they're paying for, and I need to go there for that. Talk about that a little bit. Talk about the student athletes, because I coach, I'm currently an assistant coach at a middle school, and Lake, Lake Olympia Middle School is in Missouri City some of the kids don't get the education part. At the end of the day, as talented as they are, I always tell them, bro, like the one, the thing that's going to get you in the college is really your grades. So just talk about mm-hmm. as a student athlete, the, talk about the student part because most guys really, really don't understand that because I've heard guys that say, oh, I'm looking for academics, but I don't, to me, it's not really a serious tone, but it looks like for you, like academics is serious. So just talk about mm-hmm. the academic standpoint of, of a student athlete? I mean, at the end of the day, you can be good. You can be the best player in the world. But if you don't have the grades, then you can't go to college. And you can't, you can't really keep up with your grades in college because they're bad. So it's like if you, if you put in the class time as much as you do in the gym, then you're going to be a leveled out student athlete. Who is the person that really inspired you to to make sure like the education side comes first? My mother. Talk, talk about talk about moms, man. Talk about moms and how much not only how much she's meant to you just as a, as a fan of you, but growing up, just talk about how she just like made you just better, just a, a better man. Because at the end of the day, in a year, you're out that crib. At the year, you're not going to have her no – in a year, you're not going to have her no more. In a year, there's not going to be home-cooked meals. In a year, you're on your own. So just talk about her raising the young man that that you have become. And, I, and I'm not even just talking about from a basketball st- standpoint, from a personal standpoint, how you become this bright young man. Yeah, it's like I love my mom, and she's been, she's been hard on me, but it's for the best. And – being she's been hard on me in basketball too just the same as at home like getting stuff done around the house doing your schoolwork working out it's like it's been a it's been a good journey but I'm gonna have to leave next year so what's it gonna be like knowing that she she's not gonna be with you now she's not gonna be with you come next year come or come next fall yeah she's not gonna be with you what 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 do you tell her like what what do you tell her knowing that you're moving on with your life to the next chapter of your life? Like what, what values do you bring with you to the college? At the end of the day, we know what kind of basketball, basketball um, per- person you are, but as a college graduate, the, devi- the advice that I will tell you make a lot of connections. So like what values from your mom do you bring to your, to, to your university that you hope that, that you would commit to? I bring hard work. Hard work is one because even if even if I didn't play basketball, yeah. 
let's say if I played football or something, mm-hmm. it would still demand hard work. That's in the classroom, on the on the basketball court or bas- or a football field, um, in the weight room, study time. Study time is study time is big on a uh, school. Mm-hmm. So, because if you don't study, then you're not gonna know what you're doing. And I think studying studying is really big, mm-hmm. and just like just being a good person. Mm-hmm. Throughout this year, what are you? What is your personal goals and your aspirations just for yourself and for yourself and for your team? What are your goals this year? Because at the end of the day, like you're like I said, you you have skyrocketed up these rankings. You're getting the Division One offers. Now it's time to put paper to pencil and prove it out on that court that you're one of the best. What is your goals for this year? My goals this year is to play my part on my team and to make the best out of myself and hopefully hopefully get more D1 offers than what I have right now. But I have a question, Mr. Ashton. You say play your part, and I, and I, and I get it. But in the end, I see a big improvement. There's got to be more than just play your part. Like, hey, when I get to the best player in the country, I want to dominate him. Because at the end of the day, I'm all for playing your part. But the thing about it is, mm-hmm. I want to know, as much as you play your part, my question is, how does it set you apart? That's the thing. Because I want to see what you've worked on this summer, that you're going to apply it in the game as the dominant big that you are because as much I love you that I love that you're saying you're playing your part but I want to know what sets you apart what sets me apart is my my motor and my explosiveness okay it's like it's like I'm gonna do I'm gonna do what I can to help my team win but I'm gonna do what's best for me to go to college like what's what I've done to get here to have those offers that's what I'm gonna do is is there any games that you're just like kind of motivated for to say, hey, I bet I'm I'm ready. I mean, I haven't really seen our schedule, but I know it's gonna be tough. I'm motivated for each and every game, even if it's like the worst team in Houston. I'm ready for it. Where does this humbleness come from, man? Because at the end of the day, I I, I see. Just by talking to you, I see the humbleness. Just, 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 where does it come from? It comes from my mom because she tells me all the time, "Don't boast, don't, don't get the big head about anything. Just be humble and hungry, and keep working." I want to tell some. We're gonna, we're gonna do some rapid questions. So, so, uh, this, this, this is my, 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 my rapid one. Give me four. Mm-hmm. Give me four class of 2021s in the city of Houston that you would run with? Uh, first, Caleb Stewart. Caleb Stewart. Uh, Aaron Scott. Aaron Scott. Mm. <laughs> Who else? Wait. Wait. I, I, I was going. That's why I love this because a lot of people be like, I know it's be tough, some tough decisions. Yeah, it's some tough decisions, but I'll go with uh, RJ. RJ King? Yes. Okay. And uh, Sean Walker. Sean Walker. Okay. Because I I I really thought you I really thought you were gonna drift towards Javon Jackson, but I was like, hey man, it's all good. You have Caleb Stewart though. But I but I get I it. Love Javon, but 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 the thing about it is, okay, this is my whole thing though. You got Sean, but you got yourself. So, like, you know, no big deuce? Uh, or y'all just play the same position? Yeah. Like, I, 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 Sean is kind of shorter. <laughs> I mean, if I had, like, if I can make a team, it would be with Deuce on there. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, Deuce is playing football, so it, <laughs> it, really, it really don't matter. Okay. But no, no shade to all of them. I mean, they're good. Yeah. I love their game, but that's that's my four. I got you. I got you. Um, top five NBA players in the league right now. Um, number one, LeBron. LeBron. 
uh, wait, do they have – are they hurt or – No, just... you can put KD in there. I get it. I get it. Yeah, yeah. You can put oh, KD in there. No, 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 no. Number one, number one, KD. Okay. Okay. No, number two, LeBron. Uh-huh. Number three, I'll probably have to go with Curry. Okay. Uh, number four, Giannis. Okay. And No, number three, Giannis. Number four, Curry. And number five, I have to go with Anthony Davis. No Kawhi. That's interesting. Mm, I don't really like Kawhi that much, but he's good. But I don't really, would I don't he, really like him. Would he be six? If if, if it was a list, he would be six. Okay, he would. He would. He would. Okay. Um, your top five favorites. My top five favorites are KD, KD, Giannis, Giannis. LeBron. LeBron. That, I never really Curry. heard of that because there's a lot of guys that don't really like KD and LeBron at the same time. So, like, that's kind of – it's rather you're either or. And then Giannis is really putting that mix, too. So, like, for you to like all yeah. three, that's kind of crazy. <laughs> yeah, because I really – I really – I really want to mimic my game after Giannis and KD. Okay. Because, like, they're – like you said, they're one of the two best players in the in the NBA. So to mimic your game after them, it's like it's real big. Okay, so because that's three. Who's the last two? Mm, that's tough. Um, I'll have to go with Curry and um, Damian Lillard. I like his game. So I'm guessing. Wait, wait, no, no, I forgot. Harden. Harden. Okay, that's what I was gonna say. I said Harden is on none of your lists. So I'm just like, I guess you're just not a Harden fan. <laughs> Yeah. Um, top five players of all time. Um, number one, I have to go with Jordan. Okay, thank you, uh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah, because most people they're like they're skeptical about Jordan sometimes, so yeah. I have to put him in there. Mm -hmm. Then I'll have to go with um, who else? Magic Johnson. Okay. Okay, I, I'm 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 liking this. I'm like I I can see that you're a student of the game because there are some crazy answers that I've gotten. I'm like top five of all time. And they're like, yeah, yeah, he's one of the big guards before they were even called big guards. So yeah, yeah. that's really like okay, yeah. So I have to go with Scottie Pippen. Top five of all time. Top five, yeah. I like I like his game because no, I like his game, but like. I just think that the fact that his teammate was Michael Jordan, I'm just like, I don't know. I, 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 I if LeBron is not on your list and Scotty's on your list, like I'm not even a LeBron guy, but like I know LeBron James better than Scotty Pippen. Mm -hmm. so. so LeBron, LeBron is on there. LeBron is number four, and then KD number five. So my boy Kobe is not on the list. Ooh, bro, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> no, Kobe's number two. <laughs> I, I said, I said, my boy Kobe doesn't make the list. Yeah, cause I forgot about Kobe. If you, if you weren't trying to pursue basketball, what would you be pursuing? Um, probably football, I guess. Football? Why football? Cause I just I like football. I mean, I, I've never really wanted to play football, but. I would be. I think I'll be good at it. Are you an NFL win. fan? Yeah, I am. I'm a fan of Tom Brady. Oh, you're my guy. You are my guy. Hey, 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 Brady, up, man. Hey, I like. Hey, that's my. Thank you. Hey, appreciate that, man. Favorite player, man. That's my favorite player. I just ordered my Tampa Bay Bucks jersey, so I got, I got, mm -hmm. I got you. In my, in yeah. my last, in my last question, how has basketball? shaped you up to be the man that you are today? Basketball has really shaped me and done a lot for me because without this, without basketball, I mean, I mean, I would be doing something, but without basketball, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have the, the, the motor to do what, like to go harder in the class and go harder, like anywhere. It's like everything I do, I just go hard at it and attack it head on. 
But I feel like without basketball, like I wouldn't have that that second win to just do do what I want to do or do what I have to do. Go ahead, throw out your Instagram, Twitter. If you have TikTok, go ahead and throw that out too. So, 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 go ahead, throw out all that, man. Um, Instagram at the Ashton Smith, um, and Twitter is the same thing, the Ashton Smith. No TikTok. No TikTok. No snap. I'm, I'm planning on making one though. Okay, snap. Snapchat. Uh, snap. I think it's AS two four. Okay, wait. No. no, no. Are you on Snap? Do you be using it? Yeah, I use it. But okay, I I'm saying, because I don't, I don't want to give you the snap if you're not using it. Yeah, I forgot what my username was, so I'm not gonna <laughs> put that out. Thanks. It's all good. Hey man, you know we're gonna have to do this again. So you know during the season. I, I'm going to bug you, so we're, we're going to have to do this again. But listen, yes, I told sir. PJ Neal, I actually owe you guys, all five of you, you, Aaron Scott, Jay Massey, I need you guys on the show at least one of these weeks, all at the same time. Okay. Can, 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 can we make that happen? Yeah, we can, we can make it happen, definitely. Okay, man, I appreciate it. I am The Easy Corner. Follow me on Instagram at The Easy Corner. Follow me on Twitter at easy underscore corner one. I'm here with the big man, legacy in school, sports science on big man, Mr. Ashton Smith. I'll see y'all next time. Appreciate it, dog. Thank you, dog. Appreciate mm -hmm. it, man. We're going we to do it again, Thank man. Thank you. We're going to do it again. All right. All right, fam.